Hi, in this video, we're going to learn how to calculate infiltration using the green amped method. So green and amped were two hydrologists, so if you're really famous, you get a method named after you, so that's something to aim for. What we're going to calculate is infiltration. So this kind of funny diagram that I've drawn over here is a soil column. So all these dots here are, are sand grains. And in that, on top of that sand column, that column of soil is a tree. So a tree's growing out of the land surface. And I'm going to call this the real world. So this is a little cross section through the real world. And in the real world, this is called the Vado zone. So the dry, and we've already talked about this in class, the dry part of the soil and partially saturated part of the soil is called the Vado zone. Now below the Vado zone, things start to get a little bit wet. So the wettest part of the subsurface and below is called the water table. This is our symbol for the water table. So below this, um, I'll label this as the water table. Below that is definitely wet. Uh, above the water table, I'll call that damp. So that's partially saturated. And above that, I'll use my yellow, is dry or dryish. So that's the Vado zone. So that's the real world. And then we're gonna, I'm going to go over and make kind of a, a version of this real world that I'll call graph land. So this is a graph land of the same column, which starts from zero depth and goes down. And depth here is often uh, shown as a Z. And uh, on the horizontal axis of this graph in graph land, is moisture content. Uh, moisture content is often with uh, a theta symbol. So this is called the volumetric moisture content. And we need to analyze this moisture content and how it changes with um, infiltration of, from above. So generally, before uh, infiltration event, the moisture content curve might look something like this. And we've also, we've covered this in class as well. And the maximum on the moisture content curve is 100% saturation, which happens at porosity. So when all the pores in the subsurface are filled. These two um, inflections here are the wilting point and the field capacity. This is just a review of some of the things we've already learned in class. So this is the kind of the situation of moisture content before our infiltration event. So moisture is increasing with depth as we increase through Z, and 100% um, saturation occurs around the water table or just slightly above if there's a little bit of capillary rise. So that's the first part of, uh, this is the first type of graph. The second type of graph that we're, I'm going to draw here is what I'm going to call the green amped graph or green amped land. Because what green amped is all about is infiltration. And so um, when we talk about infiltration, what we're talking about is adding a little volume of water to the land surface and allowing it to infiltrate down into the subsurface. So we're asking ourselves what happens to this moisture content graph as we add infiltration. So green amped assumes a number of different things. It assumes that there's water ponding at the surface. So there's, there's actual water sitting at the surface. And it assumes that there is a very uh, constant and flat function of water infiltration as it moves down. So here we have, again, this is a, a graph of uh, moisture content. The maximum here again is N, which is our porosity. And this wetting front is moving down into the subsurface um, throughout, the, uh, throughout, the, throughout the process of infiltration. So again, the vertical axis here is depth. The horizontal axis is moisture content. And our total 
uh, maximum moisture content is N here, our porosity. We um, now, with kind of this background information from the real world graph land and green amp land, we can uh, go to our equations of green amp and calculate that in a real world example. So our fundamental equation of, of, green, of the green amp method is uh, for uh, cumulative infiltration. So big F here is cumulative infiltration. And cumulative infiltration is a function of hydraulic conductivity and time, so K, big K and small t, plus the soil suction head, which here is gamma, and changes in our moisture content, all to uh, all multiply by ln, and then a function of one plus f of t over this same um, set of variables here, gamma, delta, theta. So you'll immediately recognize that there's a small problem with this uh, equation. We have f of t on both sides of the equation. That's buried uh, in, on the, on the right-hand side. So we have to solve this equation iteratively. So we uh, make an initial guess and then solve iteratively. And we'll see this in a minute. But first of all, this is just a reminder that this is cumulative infiltration. And by cumulative, I mean how much infiltration has happened during an infiltration event that we've pictured here. So let's uh, do a calculation uh, of the green amped method with some um, data. This is uh, using similar values to uh, one of the examples from your textbook. So first of all, for hydraulic conductivity, we're going to use a value of 0 0.05 centimeters per hour. It's again, hydraulic conductivity. For our soil suction head, we're going to use a value of 29.22 centimeters. For our effective porosity, so this is the porosity that's available to, for flow, uh, there's a value of 0 0.423, so this is our effective porosity. And you'll remember from class the difference between effective and total porosity, which is the next parameter here, n, total porosity, is 0 0.479. And finally, um, we are given uh, a value for S of E, which is our initial um, effective saturation. So, and that is 0 0.2 for initial effective saturation. And just as a reminder, that effective saturation is equal to our moisture content minus our residual moisture content, all divided by our total possible moisture content, which is our porosity, minus our residual moisture content. And our residual moisture content on this graph is um, somewhere here. So we have our, our, all our input uh, parameters, and we have our, our key equation. Um, so let's go ahead and solve that for um, uh, uh, an example calculation at um, t is equal to one hour. So at t of equal to one hour, we first want to solve for this, um, this delta theta, so this change in moisture content. And um, this delta theta um, from your notes, and we uh, derive this equation in class, is equal to the um, initial effective saturation multiplied by 1 minus the initial effective saturation. And so in this case, this is 
0 0.423 multiplied by 1 minus 0 0.2, which is equal to 0 0.338. And um, we can also, because this um, uh, gamma delta theta, which is like a sorority, uh, we luckily don't have those at UVic, um, comes up a few times in this uh, calculation. We'll calculate that as well. So gamma delta theta is equal to this 0 0.338 multiplied by our soil suction head, 29.22 centimeters, which equals 9.89 centimeters. And then another good rule of thumb is, um, uh, or another big question, I guess, is where to start our initial, our first iteration. And, and a good rule of thumb is to start at k of t. So we assume for your first iteration that f of t is equal to kt. So our uh, final thing we're going to solve here uh, before we get into solving overall is just uh, k of t, which is equal to um, 0 0.5 centimeters per hour multiplied by one hour which is then equal to 0 0.05 centimeters. All right, so we've got everything we need for to calculate um, f of t now for our first iteration of this graph, of this iterative solution. So we'd like to solve for f of t at one hour. So we'll call this f at one hour and we're gonna solve it for our first iteration. So we'll call that F1 at one hour is equal to um, KT, which is 0 0.05 centimeters plus um, 29.22 multiplied by this 3.38, which is equal to um, 9.89 centimeters, all multiplied by ln 1 plus, again, f of t, our first guess, 0 0.05 centimeters, divided by 9.89 centimeters. So this is our first guess, and the re result of this is 0 0.099. So this is just our first iteration. So what we do is then substitute this value of f of t into the same equation. So we'll do f of t at one hour. And by with, I'll just write in, with substituting f of one at one hour. And so you can see in these, um, this slide that's just come up, where this is a, a function that uh, changes, I'll draw it quickly here as well, from zero to one. And after about 50 iterations, we uh, come to a stable solution. And so that f of one hour overall is equal to 1.02 centimeter. So the cumulative infiltration after one hour is about 1.02 centimeters. So now we also want to know the infiltration rate. So that infiltration rate is small f of t. So here is big f of t, and now we're solving for small f of t. And small f of t is the infiltration rate, and that is equal to k all multiplied by 1 plus the same function, uh, gamma delta theta, divided by our f, our big F. 
And so in this case, our f of t at one hour is equal to 0 0.05 centimeters per hour multiplied by 1 plus 9.89 centimeters divided by our f at one hour, 1.02 centimeters, which is equal to 0 0.53 centimeters per hour. So what you can see, which is quite amazing, is that our infiltration rate is actually 10 times our hydraulic conductivity. So our infiltration rate is 0 0.53 centimeters an hour and our hydraulic conductivity is 0 0.5 centimeters per hour. And that's because at early time, our infiltration rate is very high. So on this next graph, what you'll see is an image of both the cumulative infiltration depth, which increases with time, and the infiltration rate, which starts high with time and decreases as capillary forces decrease. So with that, you'll be able to solve for infiltration if you know the soil parameters and um, the soil um, saturation rate. And I encourage you to take a, a walk through green amp land, graph land, and the real world to be able to solve these problems.